Shalom everyone. Ten minutes of Torah, more or less, but ten minutes on this week's parasha, this week's portion of the Torah, which is the portion of Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha. This is where the journey of the Jewish people actually begins. You see, in the first two portions of the book of Genesis, the book of Bereshit, the focus is the whole world, creation, Adam and Eve, Noah and the flood, the Tower of Babel, all of that. There's no mention of a group of people called Israelites or Hebrews, certainly not Jews because that's a much later term. We don't exist. It's only when we come to Lech Lecha, that the journey of the Jewish people becomes the focus of the Torah. And from that turning of the page, and through the re entire balance of the Bible, it's about us. It's about who we are, our history, our destiny, our experience, our memories. But I want to, in a sense, set the table set the table for us to understand something. Here we have this man, Avram, and we know little about him truly. We don't know really, because the Torah doesn't tell us, what made Avram so special, what distinguished Avram from everyone else of his time, that God selects him to the, be the one that he says, Lech Lecha, leave your land and go to the land that I will show you. You'll be the father of a great nation and you will be a blessing. We don't know. But maybe, just maybe, we can begin to understand Avram by understanding his parents. See, Avram was the son of a man by the name of Terah. And by tradition, by tradition, he was the son of a woman by the name of Emtali. Now, Emtali's name is not in the Torah at all. Terach is. And they're both interesting characters. And in a sense, you understand Avram by understanding at least the stories about his parents. Emtali and her husband Terach lived in Ur of the Chaldees, as it was called, a place called Ur. And the king was King Nimrod. And the legend, the tradition is that King, Ra king Nimrod was told that a boy would be born who would slay him. So what did King Nimrod do? He did what the Pharaoh would do centuries later. He said, if there is a boy born in my kingdom, and he didn't know about Israelites or Hebrews, any boy, period, that boy would be killed. The girls, of course, kept alive. Amtali was a woman who, in a sense, is the first example of civil disobedience. Because King Nimrod said every pregnant woman had to move into a large palace and there go through their pregnancy only to see if a boy or girl was going to be born. She refused to do that. She hid out in the cave. She defied the king and the king's immoral edict. She's the woman who fittingly is the mother of Avram. Because Avram is chosen by God because of what? Because he believes that Avram has a special commitment to tzedek umishpat, which we would call righteousness and justice. He learned that on the lap of his mother, who when she saw injustice became civilly disobedient, wouldn't go along. And so Avram is the one who is ready to go out into the world and reflect a higher set of values. A set of values which would become the values of the Hebrews, who then become the Israelites, who then become the Jews. A set of values that we believe to be our mantle, our shining coat of armor.
in this world. Terah, his father, was no slouch. You see, Terah, according to the Torah, now this is according to the Torah, actually had begun the journey out of Ur of the Chaldees, and the Torah tells us that he was going to the land of Canaan. But it appears from the Torah narrative that he had settled in a place called Haran. It's then, after years of being settled there, but having begun the journey, that Avram hears the words spoken to him, Lech lecha me'artzacha, Avram, go out of your land, go out of your father's home, to a land that I will show you, and there you will be a blessing. Avram continues the journey begun by Terach. But we've got to give Terach some credit. Because Terach understood that where they had lived in Ur of the Chaldees was not the place that they should live. He understood again that the whole religious structure of that place was not what he wanted to transmit to his children. Their view of the world, their view of of, of life was not what he wanted Avram and Avram's brothers, Nahor and Haran, to know. So he left. He left to go on the way to Canaan. And Terach doesn't get the kind of acclaim he should. But Terach must have been one incredible father and grandfather because from his three children, look what happens. Look at the line of Terach. He has one son, Avraham, who becomes the patriarch of our entire people. And then he has another son whose name was Haran. And Haran, of course, becomes the, is the father of Lot. And from Lot, who is the nephew of Avraham, comes Ruth, and then David, King David, ultimately the Messiah. And then, of course, from the other son, Nahor, comes Rivka, the second of our matriarchs. So Terach, who doesn't get the kind of credit he really deserves, nor does Emtali, Terach is a father and grandfather who understands his role, his role as a father and grandfather, to be a teacher, to somehow differentiate for his children what he thinks they need to know and understand about the world and their place in the world. They are really, in large measure, the reason that Avram becomes the person he becomes, the patriarch he will be. And Avraham, as we know from this Torah portion, is not called in the very beginning, is not called an Israelite, nor is he called a Jew. He's called an Ivri, Ivri, Hebrew. Hebrew, Ivri meaning that he comes from Aver, as the Hebrew word goes. He comes from the other side. He's different. He's different in the way he acts. He different, he's different in his view of God. He's different in his theology. He is different in his values. He's different in his commitments. He's different in terms of what his life is meant to be. And since that time, yes, we have been Jews, and yes, we have been Israelites, and today Israelis, but we've been Ephraim. We haven't been afraid to sometimes be on the other side and stand up for the values courageously that we believe are godly and important, the values that God wants us to live by, even if the world wants to disown them. So my friends, that is a little bit about Leif Lecha. My 10 minutes of Torah for this week. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, and I look forward to seeing you again uh, next week as we go on in our Torah. Shabbat Shalom.